Imagine a massive volcano erupting just miles away from your town. It's happening right now in Iceland, where residents in the capital, just about 20 miles away, can see it fuming and spurting, and others live even closer. Now, the volcano started erupting March 19th and has been putting on a show, drawing scientists and tourists alike in 60 Minutes Plus. Correspondent and my friend Seth Doan and his team traveled there to get as close as they could. And Seth is back from that trip and joins us now live from New York City. First, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a minute, but you look good. How you doing? Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you the first I, question. I was excited to hear that I was getting to talk to you. Yeah, just uh, told Suzanne I'm excited about yeah. this. All right, the first question, how close could you get? <laughs> really close to Marco. We were less than a thousand feet. It was interesting that the volcano was so dynamic. There were roads that you could go on one day that then would be blocked by lava the next. But we were so close that we could feel that volcanic ash as it was really raining down on us. It sounded like rain. Luckily, most of it would cool in the air. There were little tiny pieces of ash. Obviously, bigger pieces would still have that molten hot center. But what was actually being thrown from the vent and actually reaching us had cooled, but it was still a little unpleasant. You have to watch out for gases. Sulfur dioxide is a real issue, and through our report, you can probably hear this beeping. There are these gas alarms that everyone wears, the scientists wear, and we carry these gas masks and had to wear the gas masks, gas masks a fair share as well because the gas can be quite, quite dangerous. And Seth, you mentioned the scientists. What exactly are they doing out there at that active volcano? Suzanne, they're looking at all different sorts of things. Some are looking at the gases. Some are looking at the magma and the lava itself. Some are mapping how the lava flows so they can kind of predict, in the end, try to predict volcanoes itself, but at least predict the flow. And, and these are used both for scientific purposes, but also just to protect the public. As you, I heard you guys having some debate in the <laughs> lead up to this, whether you would, whether you would travel to see a volcano or not. It is quite spectacular, and around 90,000 people have made about an hour-long hike from the closest road out there to see it. We talked to people who had been there five, six times, some people who had flown to Iceland or flown to that part of Iceland just to see it, and it's spectacular. I couldn't believe, even these scientists who, who study these things, it's their life, you would get out of the car, you would turn your head, and you would see this erupting mm. volcano and almost everyone would say wow you it was just spectacular it is beautiful to see from a distance as well uh, re we remember the uh, 2010 eruption <laughs> from in a iceland yeah. yeah that <laughs> shut down uh, air travel uh, we haven't seen that with this eruption are you concerned or any worries this is it's a different type of eruption. This is called uh, an effusive. You can think of it as more of an oozing eruption, which is what really makes it so accessible to tourists and to scientists. It's not that explosive eruption. The other thing is it's in a different place. You know, something like 80% of volcanoes that erupt, erupt underwater, so you never get to see them. This is quite unique that it is so close to the capital. It's on a peninsula that hasn't seen an eruption in 800 years. But because it's this effusive flow, you can get closer to it. They are watching another one, uh, which is in a yellow alert, which is under the biggest ice sheet of, of a glacier, and that would produce a far ashier eruption. That's what we saw in 2010. And Seth, uh, before we go, I've been talking about Italy what, for the past two years, Suzanne. <laughs> yeah. Seth really is a friend of mine, and I don't <laughs> want to put your business out in the street, but he has a beautiful home in Rome and had me over for dinner. And I, I, you've got to come back to Marco. Since. I will. Yeah. You know I will. But it's good to see that you're doing well, good and tell my back. brother you're I said invited. hello to. All right. I'm hide in the luggage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will. All right. Good to <laughs> Thanks, see you, man. Bye-bye. You're welcome too, Suzanne. <laughs>